So what is sciatica? Let's understand that term. It's a common uh, term people, you know, my grandfather said, I have sciatica, you know, I don't even know what it meant. It seemed like he used to talk, talk, talk about pain going down one of the legs. And that's often what people describe anything going down onto one side and sometimes both legs um, that's referred from the buttock all the way down, almost all the way down to the foot. Um, the more scientific term, if you hear a therapist or a doctor talk about it, he may refer to it as lumbar radiculopathy. The term sciatica has some origins in Greek and Latin, um, but the sciaticus in Latin refers to the sciatic nerve that's affected down the leg. Um, that's kind of a garbage term, it's just a general term. Um, it doesn't tell us really what is causing uh, the sciatica, but it is something that um, is used around and bantered around. Uh, you really don't see it when people refer doctors and medical, but it's a term that um, just refers to any kind of pain or sensation down the leg. Um, the sciatic nerve is a combination of several nerve roots that provide sensation, um, like a motor or, you know, go to the muscles for contraction, and also any kind of pain fibers down the leg, okay? Um, in the case of sciatica, you can also have uh, sensation changes, you can have weakness, or just simply just pain um, on and off or constant. So we have sciatica, one of the most common, you know, or lumbar radiculopathy, like we talked about. The nerve roots that are most commonly affected is the L4, L5, and S1 nerve roots that come off. And that's basically lumbar nerve root 4, lumbar nerve root 5, and then sacral uh, nerve root 1, okay? They're coming off the lower lumbar spine. And if you have any kind of sensation loss in the foot, most of these, um, those nerve roots provide sensation to that to, to, in three different spots in the lower foot. Um, also, you can have situations where you have what they call foot drop, where you'll feel like you can't control your foot, you, put, you, put your, you hit your foot on the ground and the foot just kind of slowly, you know, kind of lowers down quickly and that's a sign of weakness. You'll hear like a foot slap with it. You get a weakness, you can have sensation changes. Um, but those are some of the symptoms that you may get with sciatica, but those nerve roots are most commonly affected in the sciatic nerve. So interesting, um, when you have these nerve roots affected, they're actually coming up the lower lumbar spine. And everyone would assume that, hey, I've got, um, you know, I've got this problem that originates here. The, the sciatic nerve, or maybe one of those nerve roots are being injured or pinched somewhere, um, must have lower back pain. Not all the time. Sometimes you only have it just in the, in the feet or the calves or the thigh. And sometimes you lack lower back pain. Sometimes you do. It really varies and it's very confusing for the patient. Sometimes people have come to me for knee pain. That actually was a form of sciatica. One of the nerve roots were affected. Um, it crosses it. They'll say they have got a foot and ankle or plantar fasciitis. So it's important to, um, it's often confusing what truly is sciatica and what's truly affected because sometimes the location of the pain will make you feel like it's relating for the knee or it's coming from the foot ankle or it's coming from the hip. Um, so once we start moving the background, we'll talk about this later through an evaluation, we can often say, wow, we're moving our back during our initial screening when we have someone, we always do this with anyone that's got a, um, a lower extremity injury, we always want to make sure the back isn't involved, okay, um, before we start saying this is a hip issue, knee issue, ankle issue, anything like that. So keep that in mind. Sciatica sometimes will not be accompanied by lower back pain and sometimes it will. So some of the things with people with sciatica, especially if it's related to a disc herniation or degenerative disc problem or um, degenerative joint problem in the lower back, is a lot of times they'll experience pain when the sciatic nerve root is irritated. It can be from swelling, disc whatever, disc herniations, something going on in the area or just general inflammation. They'll have a hard time often with sitting. Um, anytime they're getting out of a car or rising from sitting. Um, driving is sometimes a little hard. Um, sometimes putting on their socks, especially in the morning trying to do that particular movement. And the idea, the, one of the theories is that, that those nerve roots are put on stretch and if they're pinched and they're a little sensitive, when you put your leg out, those little heart or crossing your leg like this, and sitting like this for a period of time will start triggering the sciatica. Um, those are some of the common things you'll notice with that particular problem. Um, but just something to keep in mind, not always, but these are some of the things that might be affecting those nerve roots coming off the lower back. So some of the things that can contribute to sciatica, we'll talk about a little bit, it could be general inflammation in the area. Um, inflammation can be related to, like I said, a joint problem. It can be related to a disc herniation. Um, it can be related to a stress fracture in the area, um, a tumor. Uh, you can also have a pseudo, <clears throat> excuse me, sciatica like piriformis syndrome. So they're actually getting symptoms down here, but it's from a muscle 
in the hip girdle right here, okay, on either side, typically on one side, that compresses the sciatic nerve, uh, nerves uh, as they go through that area, or nerve I should say. They go through that area and that can cause a pinching and, and problems. And also during pregnancy, a lot of uh, women will, will have periods where they're a little looser, um, they're retaining more water and liquid, and that can cause some problems and give you a Kind of, that could be causing some of the pinches in the nerve. So keep that in mind. Um, also other things, stenosis, where you have a narrowing of where the nerve roots come off the lower back. The hole that comes where the nerves are passing is actually narrowing where bony portions are starting to p pinch on that nerve. So there's a lot of things that can give you these symptoms. That's like you said earlier, we don't know which one it is without having a proper diagnosis. And that diagnosis is based upon the patient, what the patient tells myself, a therapist or a doctor. Um, it's also based on imaging and also the movements. What movements cause sciatica or those symptoms? That's really, really important. And it's also important to be able to reproduce the symptoms or alter those symptoms during your evaluation. That tells us a lot about it if we can make an immediate change during the first visit. So in a few cases, when we've talked about this earlier, we've done videos on this, you want to be aware of red flags. Red flags are signs that we really should seek medical care really quickly and not a therapist, talking to your doctor, your intern, whoever is handling your care, but getting there quickly. And some of the signs is when you start losing bowel and bladder, you may have symptoms in different areas down the leg, but if you're starting to see that there's a connection, that I'm, I'm having a change in bladder function, it seems to get worse when my back and sciatica increases. That's a sign that you gotta see the doctor really soon, like immediately. Some people should go to the emergency room if it's, you know, it's, it's, it's something you don't wanna play around with. You wanna wait for an appointment. You wanna get in urgent care quickly. Um, an ability to have a bowel movement, um, that's another case. Um, extreme fever, possible signs of an infection. Um, all those things are signs that there's something going on there that's more serious and requires more care. <laughs> Um, in cases where um, it hurts extremely, it hurts a great deal and gives you a drop attack where you feel like you're going to drop because of the pain, obviously we want to take care of that quickly and address that um, um, quickly. Unexplained weight loss can be a sign of um, cancer. It can be some, a sign of something much more serious. Um, those are cases of red flags. Um, um, and also progressive weakness. You're saying, wow, I was a little weak the other day. I feel a little bit weak. And then all of a sudden it got weak quickly. All of a sudden I was starting to lose my balance. Um, and, and that's a sign or, or that foot drop that we talked about earlier, that's getting progressively worse in a very short period of time. Not just that you're out of shape, but you're losing strength quickly. That is a red flag and that's something that you need to seek care right away. History of trauma, um, that's another one um, that's a big issue. You know, you just fell down the stairs, you may have a small fracture, you know, still be able to move around, but you have something that's lodged on those nerve roots um, that's causing those sciatica symptoms and also extreme night pain, especially pain that doesn't vary with movement. What does that mean? That means um, a lot of symptoms that are related to mechanical, meaning something orthopedic like a joint in a different spot or you're a little weak, will change and alter depending on movement, okay? If your pain never changes, it's horrible, 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 you could do whatever, you're in jumping jacks, you could be sitting, it doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't change and it seems like it's getting worse and it's very, very intense, especially if you have intense night pain and not altering at all, that's a sign that you need to say get some care, so keep that in mind. Now, another thing to consider is what is good and bad pain? Um, or, or, you know, if you're doing an exercise, let's say you look at an exercise on the internet and you're trying some movements, um, if you're having sciatica, realize if you're getting um, a movement of pain in a certain direction, sometimes it's good or bad. So let's give you an example of what's considered a good movement or bad movement of pain. So let's have you have sciatica, you woke up, you had a new workout, you're doing some deadlifts or something like that, and you're having pain that's radiating here, and it's all in this area, okay? You start doing one of the stretches you saw on the internet, uh, on YouTube, and you start having the pain moving up and out of the leg and moving closer to where we think it's occurring, right where the nerve roots exit the back or buttock area, that's considered a good sign. That's called centralization. Okay. If you're doing a movement or stretch that's causing symptoms to radiate further down, let's say it starts with this pain that stops at your knee. You do a stretch online, you do a knees to chest, you arch your back, you do some kind of movement or activity, and the symptoms start going further down, that's often called, that's called peripheralization. It means the symptoms are getting worse. It means you probably want to stop that activity. Sometimes you just want to stop what you're doing. If you're standing too long, you're getting these symptoms. Obviously, some of this seems, you know, like common sense, but the more that you can control these symptoms and turn down the pain levels, like almost like a noise and a volume, 
and, and kind of get it to the point where it's less severe, the idea is that you allow that area to heal. So sometimes it's just sitting too long or driving too long, okay? We want to break up that and get you out of the position where it causes the, the symptoms to centralize, move up, or completely abolish, okay? So keep that in mind when you're doing some of these stretches. It's not necessarily a no pain, no gain. These nerve roots are angry, all right? Something's not working well in there. The plumbing is off in that sciatic nerve. We want to basically take whatever is taking pressure, putting some pressure, um, almost like you're stepping on that garden hose and stopping the pressure. We want to get that pressure off that structure, okay? The more you go by these rules, that helps you um, control the pain and hopefully alter it. If you can't, you probably need a good evaluation. So in some cases of sciatica, um, some of the recommendations if you go to a physician may be taking some oral steroids. Uh, it can be over-the-counter medications. They may recommend Advil or Motrin or something like that. You really got to talk to your doctor about that to make sure you're allowed to take that. Um, in more severe cases, sometimes they'll actually offer uh, an epidural, some kind of injection to kind of take care of the pain and bathe the area in anti-inflammatory medication. So what does that do? that takes the inflammation and pulls it out of the area. And what we find out is nerve roots are very sensitive to inflammation in the area. Sometimes it naturally goes away because the body slowly st starts to heal. In some cases, it needs a little bit of a push to get that inflammation down and allow that nerve root to kind of start conducting that impulse to the leg and provide sensation to the leg and, and, and it, it kind of turn that, that, that irritation off, drop the swelling down, the nerve root starts to conduct and we start taking that pressure like that fire hose or that garden hose, we're taking our foot off that hose and we're allowing everything to conduct, conduct better. We have you know, a lot of blood vessels and things and flow within that nerve root that has to go back and forth to allow a very proper normal functioning nerve. So that's the, the function of, of these anti-inflammatories, and that's what it solves. Um, other medications may just mask the pain. The anti-inflammatories, in theory, take away the origin of the pain. It doesn't really mask it. Um, so just something to keep in mind if you're looking at that's something that maybe you may have to resort to if it's just not improving. So do you need an x-ray or an MRI if you have sciatica? Um, it's an excellent question. It comes up a lot here. Um, I would say the first six to eight weeks, um, you can, a lot of these things just get better with time, okay? Um, they do show by having active intervention by a therapist, um, getting educated on kind of what's going on, kind of like what we're doing here, giving you like an idea of what you're dealing with, um, you know, allows you to kind of recover faster. Um, that being said, around six to eight weeks, if you're not improving and you're really kind of in a plateau especially, you do want to seek some care. But getting an x-ray and an MRI in the early stages, the first six weeks, is generally not indicated unless you're having a red flag like we talked about. Bowel and bladder problems, progressive weakness, horrific, horrible pain, some of the things we talked about earlier. But so, and in actuality, they actually find that when you do an x-ray or MRI of someone's back, there's, typically as you get older, especially over the 50, 40 to 50 years of age, there's typically some wear and tear. So the MRI shows us some things that are less than perfect inside your back and area in those areas that get you nervous. And some of them are just very, you know, they're age-related changes that, uh, you know, people just slowly those discs are starting to, you know, wear a little bit and change a little bit. But they may not actually be the source of the problem. But when you get that MRI and you see that and you're told by your doctor you have these problems, they actually find that your recovery takes longer. You get more nervous, you get more sensitive, your blood pressure goes up a little bit and you get a little fearful of movement. So to jump to that, we try not to have our patients jump to that because once they see that, they get nervous and then they, they start being, the care gets guided by that. You get nervous. When in actuality, um, a lot of these things you would have found even prior to you having this episode of sciatica. And they come on and off um, for years. Unfortunately, typically they get worse as, as each episode. After your first episode of back pain sciatica, typically they get worse as you get older. So, you, you know, getting a little education and a little guidance is often helpful to understand, you know, what triggers it, what things you can do, and understanding uh, what it means. And also it drops your, your, your fear and your stress, which can aid and it can delay, actually aid, it can delay the recovery. Now, sciatic can vary. You know, it's, it's the whole theory, you know, how long does it take for sciatic to get better? It depends. If it's just a little bit of swelling around the nerve roots, it can take two or three days, okay? Um, right around six to eight weeks, a lot of structures heal. A lot of, um, of the body's ability to heal heals by itself, as long as it's not aggravated, again, by whatever is triggering the sciatic. Like, if you're constantly doing something like putting your, hitting yourself with a hammer with a, on the knuckle, 
yeah, it's never really going to heal if you keep on doing that. So you have to establish what the triggers or the things that are possibly causing this. Um, and if we can eliminate those, we should heal in a certain period of time. There are different levels that we talk about in our blog, which you can see on our website, that will talk about different levels of nerve damage. And depending on the level of nerve damage, it could take a while for that nerve to recover, or it can be a very short period of time before that nerve feels, feels better and starts conducting. And you don't have these abnormal feelings down the leg. But it does vary, okay? And that's in our blog, you'll see that. But it's different levels of nerve compression. So what's a quick test for sciatica? It's a test called a slump test. Slump test basically can be done in the sitting. You can do a self-test that you can do by yourself. Um, I'm going to sit on the edge of the stool here. Typically like a table or any kind of chair is fine. If you have symptoms at the time when you're doing the test, we're trying to see if it makes it worse, the symptoms you're having trouble with. If it gives you other pains, we're not as concerned about it, but it's got to reproduce the symptoms that you're having problems with. Okay, so first thing is just to sit up tall. Um, do we have any symptoms? Okay. Nope, don't have anything like that. Okay, the first thing is we're going to slump down. Okay. All right, does that bring on the symptoms or does it worsen it? Okay, all right. No change. Let your head fall to your chest. No change in symptoms. You then want to extend. If it's on your right side, you extend your right leg and then bring your foot back like this. If that reproduces the symptoms, um, you can then bring your head up and release it, and if that takes the symptoms away, that's considered a positive test. Most people consider it a positive test. As soon as you extend, if it reproduces the same problems that you're having, same symptoms you're having, boom, that's a positive test, you have sciatica. Like I said, it only means that the sciatic nerve is not conducting well, and it just it is something that tells us that's probably what's the origin of the problem. If it's not, I mean, you could have referral from your hip or a piriformis syndrome or something else could be bothering those nerve roots that go down the leg. It kind of gives you like a general idea of what's going on or what thing is affected. It may not tell you exactly what is causing the pain or irritating that aesthetic nerve root, but that's called the slump test. So I hope this sheds some light on sciatica and also what we explained earlier, lumbar radiculopathy. It's, it's a generalized term, a layman's term they refer to it as. Um, what we do here is you use, it in McKenzie, use the McKenzie method to evaluate anyone that's got sciatica symptoms, leg symptoms, back, back symptoms, uh, and we take them through that. And that's in one of our videos, just to understanding the McKenzie method, and I'll link you to that video in the end there so you can go in. So listen, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe so you can get some future um, notifications, and make sure you turn on the notifications so you'll know when our videos became present. Um, become, oh, uh, I can't even talk today, uh, when they come up. All right, hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.